Well, here we are again with another NVIDIA GPU launch. And this time, it's the RTX 3090, a card that costs $1,500. And it's supposed to give you the best that Ampere can offer right now. To give you a little bit of idea what that means in terms of hardware dollars, you can pick up a Ryzen 7 3800XT, 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory, an EVGA RTX 3080 XC3, if you can find one, of course, and still have some money left for some storage or maybe even a really nice dinner. I want you to keep that in mind as I go through this video because it really puts everything into perspective. Uh, from our RTX 3080 videos, a lot of you on Twitter and Instagram uh, were talking about waiting for the RTX 3090 before upgrading. So this video is gonna be a really honest discussion about whether or not gamers should actually make the jump. So that leads me into what we're covering. First, there's the usual gaming benchmarks at 1440p and 4K. The next step is to see if the RTX 3090 is being CPU limited by rerunning all the benchmarks with an overclock processor at 1440p, 4K, and yes, 1080p as well. Now, obviously we know that the RTX 3090 isn't designed to be a pure gaming GPU since it offers huge benefits in compute workloads, but it's still being flogged to gamers with deep pockets. Everything seems to be pointing towards that direction because it comes bundled with a free copy of Watch Dogs Legion and Nvidia popped it into their GeForce gaming lineup rather than giving it a Titan branding. Also, the previews yesterday focused on crafting an 8K gaming narrative. I also wanna mention that reviews like this one weren't allowed until orders go live, so a lot of people have already made their purchase decisions by now. And that's too bad because this video is gonna be a warning against gamers actually buying the RTX 3090. But either way, uh, we were in sample the founder's edition of this GPU, so instead we have this Gigabyte RTX 3090 that just showed up a few days before launch. So let's get started with specs because there's a bit of a reality check right away. Nvidia did make it obvious that this card is memory focused above all else. That's a pretty big deal for people using creative compute or technical applications that are VRAM limited right now. As a matter of fact, we're close to running up against some memory limitations in Resolve ourselves. So I totally hear Nvidia on this one. Remember, back when it was launched, the RTX 2080 Ti had some amazing performance uplifts versus the 2080, since it had almost 50% more cores, three gigabytes of additional memory, and a wider memory interface for 50% more money. It didn't offer the best bang for the buck, but it was still a great GPU for gamers who had the money to burn on bragging rights. The 3090, on the other hand, has only 20% more cores than the 3080, very similar clock speeds, but more than double the memory and wider memory interface. So this card isn't designed to be much faster than the 3080 in games. And let me repeat that. The 3090 is not meant to beat the 3080 by a substantial margin, but it's more than double the price. Meanwhile, custom cards will go for between a few bucks and a few hundred dollars more. Something like this Gigabyte RTX 3090 Gaming OC is supposed to hit 1580, but some other versions like the ROG Strix or Aorus Extreme will be above $1,700. The interesting thing is the Gaming OC is able to hit a constant 1980 megahertz while running at under 70 degrees Celsius. That's about 100 megahertz faster than the RTX 3080 Founders Edition we have while operating at pretty similar temperatures. Honestly, I can't tell you enough how impressive this is since the RTX 3090 core puts out a lot more heat. But this also brings up a pretty good point about comparisons in this video. It'll make the RTX 3090 look a bit better than it would at stock speeds. Noise was really well managed too, but anything other than near silence would have been a failure for Gigabyte given the sheer size of their heatsink. Interestingly, power is pretty similar between these two cards with the pre-overclocked RTX 3090 drawing at most 35 watts more. But don't let this chart fool you. The 3090 and 3080 are two of the most power hungry GPUs of all time, and we'd recommend at least a 700 watt power supply. Now on camera, this Gigabyte RTX 3090 might look like a pretty normal custom GPU until you realize it's absolutely massive, even compared to the RTX 2080 Ti version. You'll need to be really aware of how big it is. Not just the triple slot height or the length, but the width as well. It might start off slim, but there's a huge overhang that just outpass the PCB. Another thing you'll need to be aware of is the potential for GPU sag. These custom RTX 3000 series cards are big, 
bulky and heavy. I know EVGA is offering anti-sag brackets with some of their cards, but Gigabyte doesn't. We noticed a few odd things with this GPU. First of all, Gigabyte has used a PCB that's shorter than the heatsink, but they kept the dual 8-pin power connectors closer to the card's rear end. Those are connected to the PCB via extension wires. They also tried to copy NVIDIA's airflow design by opening a section of the backplate so one of the fans could breathe a little bit better. The problem is that those power cables actually block off a good amount of that fan's airflow. So with that out of the way, let's get into the benchmarks with our usual test system running at stock settings. Well, that was certainly interesting, wasn't it? You see, from the very first day when NVIDIA announced these new GPUs, we were saying that the 3090 won't offer or won't give much of a gaming advantage over the 3080, and this proves it. I also want to mention this one more time, that this Gigabyte RTX 3090 is slightly overclocked, whereas the 3080 Founders Edition isn't. So if I were to compare these cards in their stock configurations, the separation would be slightly less. And even now, it isn't that much. Across all the games at 1440p, we saw only about an 8% overall increase in average frame rates and even less than that with the 1% lows. One thing I do want to mention is Jedi Fallen Order and Overwatch have built-in frame rate limiters that can't be overridden and it looked like the RTX 3090 hit those a few times, so its performance has been capped a bit. 4K removes those limits, so the RTX 3090 is now about 14% ahead on average and it shows 11% improvement in 99 percentile frame rates as well. The simple fact is, even at 4K and the highest detail settings, games become limited by GPU processing long before they need more than 10 gigabytes of VRAM or the memory bandwidth provided by the RTX 3090. Sure, you can fix the results and make this card look a lot better by throwing in 8K, but that's just a marketing hype. Is anyone actually going to play at that resolution? Probably not. But like I said at the beginning, these super close results got us wondering if the RTX 3090 was being bottlenecked by the Core i9-10900K. I mean, sure, it's the fastest CPU available for gaming right now, but with a GPU as powerful as this one, we could be running up against the limits of processor horsepower. So we went off for more benchmarks, and this time, instead of the 10900K running at the usual 4.8 to 4.9 gigahertz in games, we overclocked it to a constant 5.3 gigahertz. Not only that, but we're adding 1080p results here too, since those could really tell us if there's a processor bottleneck somewhere. Look, I know what you're saying. No one's going to buy a high-end GPU to play at 1080p, but I disagree because a high-end graphics card can be an interesting option for competitive gamers who play at low resolutions to get extremely fast frame rates or higher frame rates uh, and better reaction times. And that's why we're including this for them. Kicking things off with CSGO, and this game was obviously CPU limited in a big way, since even the RTX 3080 with an overclocked CPU can actually beat the RTX 3090 in a stock system. This is also why you won't see much difference between the stock system's 1080p and its 1440p results. Now it looks like we're smashing heads first into a game engine limiter. Speaking of limiters, that's exactly what happens with Jedi Fallen Order, since it caps at 144 frames per second, and Overwatch as well. By the way, Overwatch's new patch increases the frame cap to 400, so we needed to re-benchmark all the cards here. Moving on, and there's a few games with minor increases with the overclocked CPU, but for the most part, both the RTX 3080 and the RTX 3090 are still showing the GPU limitations still exist, at 1080p. 1440p brings everything even closer together, but the 5.3 GHz 10900K positively affects 99 percentile frame rates more than averages. Either way, other than a few exceptions, the RTX 3090 wasn't bottlenecked by the CPU at 1080p, and it certainly isn't here either. 
Now at 4K, there's basically no difference between the results. And the separation between the RTX 3080 and 3090 sticks to about 13% on average. So that's pretty much expected since 4K puts all the emphasis on the GPU, even in more basic DX9 titles. All right, so with all of that done, I think it's time to wrap this up. And guys, there's no doubt that this GPU should be a go-to purchase for creators, digital artists, or anyone who needs access to a ton of compute horsepower. I can't argue with that at all, since it is going to be a critical component in my own editing workflow going forward. But like I said in the intro, there's plenty of reasons why this video was done from a gaming perspective. And I'm hoping it helps some people hit the brakes before giving in to the hyped up consumerism and making a really poor buying decision. And look, flagship GPUs are always pretty low on the value for money scale, and there's no denying it. A good example of it was the RTX 2080 Ti. Back in 2018, it cost 50% more than the 2080, and it featured between 20 to 37% better performance. Now in 2020, the RTX 3080 is an amazing value, provided you can actually find one for $700. Maybe its price is even too low, but that's another conversation for another time. But let's see where the RTX 3090 slots into this since it costs more than double what the RTX 3080 does while offering at the most 14% higher frame rates at 4K. At launch, this makes it one of the single worst values versus a less expensive alternative we've ever seen from any GeForce or Radeon GPU. Sure, past Titans may have been worse, but remember, according to Nvidia, this isn't a Titan, it's a GeForce card. So I guess that's it. From a creator standpoint, I'm pretty excited about the RTX 3090 and what it can bring to the table. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to popping this thing into one of my new editing workstations. But for gamers, the real question is, how much are you willing to pay for just 14%? Nvidia is daring you to say double. They want you to say it. They need you to say it because it'll guide their next steps. And that, and that should be a very, very big red flag for everyone.